Hello, it's Miss Butcher, and this video is all about writing quadratic functions. And when I say writing quadratic functions, I mean I'm going to give you a vertex and I'm going to give you a point. So I'm going to give you two parts, two very small parts, and I want you to find the equation of the parabola. So what you're going to do, if I give you the vertex, that should clue into you, all right, I want to use a vertex form. So I'm going to use the vertex form of the equation, and what I've been given is an, a vertex of h and k, and I've also get, been given a point that is an x and a y. So I take those four letters and I'll plug them in, and then I'll have everything except a. Oh, and I'll, I can solve for a. All right, so here's what we do. Here's vertex form, and now here's the numbers plugged in. y is negative 6, x is 5, h is 3, and k is 2. So then we'll just do a little math, and we will, um, you know, 5 minus 3 is 2, and then 2 squared is 4, subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 4, and we get an a of negative 2. So now we know what a is, now we can write the equation, y equals negative 2 for a, and then x minus 3 for h squared plus 2 for k. And notice this is a negative 2, so that tells you this is going to be a frowny parabola, a sad one. It's going to open down. All right, here's another example. Find the equation of the parabola that has an axis of symmetry at x equals 4 and contains the points 3, 5, and 7, 12. So I've given you two points, and giving you two points on a parabola um, is not enough because you could have this one or this one or this one. It doesn't matter. You could have many, many parabolas through two points. However, by also giving you the axis of symmetry, I've given you enough things that you can find the equation. So since we know the axis of symmetry, we know the vertex always lies on that axis, we know h. And we can use that h and each ordered pair, we can use both ordered pairs, plug them in, we're going to have to make a system of equations. And that way we can solve for the a that we don't know and the k that we don't know. So just like before, we're going to take y equals a x minus h all squared plus k. And we're going to put 5 in for y, 3 in for x, and then 4 in for h. So we're using the first point and then that for h. Oops, okay. <laughs> So here we go, we've simplified it a little bit. 5 equals a times negative 1 squared plus k, and we all know negative 1 all squared is just 1. So we have 5 equals a plus k. So now we have to do it again, only this time we're going to use the second point and also the same h. So we're going to plug that in. 12 equals a, 7 minus 4 all squared plus k. And then we do a little bit of math, and we get 7 minus 4 is 3, 3 squared is 9. So now we have two linear equations, and we can solve a system of linear equations. You guys learned that in Algebra 1. All right, now I'm going to do this using substitution. So we'll take the first one, 5 equals a plus k, and then we'll rearrange it so that k equals 5 minus a. Get k by itself. And then I'm going to take k from this linear equation, and plug it into the other linear equation, which was 12 equals 9a plus k. So I just took this k and plugged it in right there for, for k in the other equation. Y'all remember substitution, I hope. So now we're going to combine like terms. So 12 equals 8a plus 5, and then come up here, um, subtract 5, 7 equals 8a, a equals 7 eighths. So now that we know a, we still need k. But like we said a second ago, we know k is 5 minus a. So we're just going to do 5 minus 7 eighths and get 33 over whatever that is, 8. So here's our final solution. We're going to rewrite the equation with x and y back as variables. a is 7 eighths, h is 4, and now we know k is 33 over 8. So we've written the equation of the parabola that has that axis of symmetry and contains both of those two points. Okay, one more example. This isn't a long one. But now I'm going to give you x-intercepts. I'm going to give you the roots of negative 1, 0, and 4, 0, and I'm going to give you point three two. So now we don't have any h or k, but what we do have is a p and a q to use in an intercept form. So we will use a times x minus p times x minus q, and we'll plug in 
P here, Q is here is four, and then three and two is an X and a Y. So I've taken the intercept form equation, plugged in the two for Y, the three for X, the negative one, so X minus negative one becomes plus one, and then the four, so X minus four is gonna be three minus four. And then we just do the math, three plus, four, three plus one is four, three minus four is negative one, and we get two equals negative four A, and A is negative one half. Now we know A, that's all we needed because we had everything else. So Y equals, and then we write in A, which is negative one half, and then X minus P, so X plus one, and X minus Q, X minus four. Just be sure that Y and X get to, to stay as variables, and then the A and the P and the Q get to be the numbers that we know that they are now. So that's it. That was a short video. It's kind of boring, kind of bland, not even very pretty, but I don't care. You're done. Have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.